Good morning. Welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from AriseNow.ca. Yes. Well, Angie, this is a special weekend because it's well, it's a holiday weekend here in yeah, Canada. But why is it a holiday? Because tomorrow is Canada Day. Yeah. I'm wearing red. And so are you. Yes. <laughs> to market. Trying to celebrate. Oh, red and white. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Canadian. I don't, I don't have a maple leaf right here. Can the Canadian colors. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So well, we I hope are, you're having a good weekend. Yeah. And Wherever you are in yes. whatever country in the world you're watching. Uh, but we here in Canada are just happy to celebrate the birthday of our country and thankful for this wonderful place that... Uh, that we uh, call home. Yeah, that we call home. Well, yeah. we have been doing a study on First John. We're calling it a journey through First John. Yes, and we've uh, been journeying on for five weeks so far. Yeah, and, and there's five chapters, but we sure haven't gotten through the five chapters yet. We're almost to the end of chapter two. We have uh, two verses yet that lead into chapter three. So okay. I think we're going to pick up there. But just want to encourage you to leave a comment, uh, say hello in the chat, and... Um, and just let us know uh, how you're enjoying this journey through First John. If you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. Right, and if you've missed some of the weeks previous, you can find them on our YouTube channel, Arise Now. Yeah, if you're not sure about any of that, just go to arisenow.ca, our website. Right, and uh, you can find them there. It oh. will be end up in a playlist, and um, maybe we should get the playlist started. Okay, so let's just see here. Uh, let's start in chapter 2, verse 28, and then read through to uh, the first three verses of chapter 3. We'll stop there and then uh, make a few comments and then keep going. Okay. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we start in verse 28 of chapter 2 with uh, sort of carrying on with the theme that we were talking about last week, and that is being in him. Right. And that's in the previous verses in 2. He was talking about that if we, um, if we uh, see to it that you... you uh, keep believing uh, the things that you were taught at the beginning. And if it does, you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And, uh, and so we are in, in Jesus, right? right? We did a series on um, being united with Christ um, probably a couple, two or three years ago. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's just a lot of uh, things to say around that, a lot of verses that have that whole idea of being in Christ. Yes. And there, that phrase, in him, in Christ, is, um, is used numerous times in the next number of verses. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's one that um, Paul writes a lot about in his writings, and here John is mentioning it as well. Right. Uh, it's this whole idea that we are united with Christ uh, we're united with him in his death. We're going to be united with him in his. We are united with him in his resurrection, uh, and 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 every, each and every day we live in that union with him. Yeah. Um, and so, John says, "Let us continue to live in him." And the fruit of that is that we can have confidence, be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Mm -hmm. So the you know we spent a bit of time last week talking about the last hour and the last days and when Jesus is coming back, well, we don't have to live in fear of that day. We can live with confidence, looking forward to meeting the, our Savior and our Lord, the one we love, because we've lived in that relationship with Him and we've built that, uh, that relationship each and every day. That's right. Uh, so I, that's one of my favorite verses in First John is, is chapter 2, verse 28, that we can be in Him, remain in him, 
live in him so we can be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Right. Um, and then he goes on. And, and oh. just to say, when we're talking about, it says well, about he and him, we're talking about Jesus. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. just, just to make that clear, uh, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. That's what he's talking about, about Jesus. Yeah. Well, and then it goes, the goes on in verse 29. It says, if you know that he is righteous, well, that would be Jesus. Then you know that everyone who done, does what is right has been born of him. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happens when we say yes to Jesus, when we become a follower of his, when we surrender our life to him. Uh, it's what Jesus refers to in John chapter 3, where he's talking with Nicodemus. And he says, uh, Nicodemus wants to know... Um, you know, he has some questions, right? And, and Jesus says, unless a man is, uh, or a woman, a person, is born again, born of the, born of the Spirit. Born from above. Yeah, they yeah. cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so, so that is what we want. We want to be born of him. We want to be born again. That's our, our, um, our spiritual birth. Right, that's where the wisdom and the revelation comes from, right? Mm -hmm. When we have eyes to see the kingdom of God, right? The, the God's will, God's ways. And, and he's saying really in here, the evidence of that in our lives is that we're going to do what is right. Mm -hmm. And that is a really dominant theme throughout chapter 3 uh, about doing right. And, and again, this is because John was teaching and writing in this letter to correct some false teaching because it was that they the teaching was that you can just do whatever you want because your body's evil and it doesn't matter and, it, and it's not really uh, going to affect you. Well, John's saying, no, that is not right. The evidence of the fact that you are born in him, that he is in you and you are in him, is that we are going to do what is right. right. And so we'll, we'll get back uh, more verses on that coming up. But let's um, carry on then looking at, um, at the first verses that you read from chapter 3. Uh, which talk about, start off with the great love that has been lavished on us. I don't know about you, but I just love that word. Lavished, it's like sh sh smothered, like they smothered your <laughs> Schmeer, Were you going to say smeared and <laughs> slaughtered? The was, love of God's was, all over you. I was wondering what, what word you were going for there. Um, and so, yeah, so First John 2, 28, I said, is one of my favorite verses in this book. Well, th chapter 3, verse 1 is right there, too, as, as one of my favorite ones because of the fact that it talks about this love that has been lavished on us that we get to be called children of God. And, you know, we never want to take this incredible privilege that we have that, that we get to be called children of God. And, uh, and it's because of this incredible love that he has given us. And we never want to take that for granted. We want to, I want to remind myself of that every day so that it doesn't become sort of just uh, like, ho oh, hum, yeah, I'm a child of God. No, like, hallelujah, I'm a child of God, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there's, um, there's, I think we should maybe just jump over to the book of John, chapter 1, because uh, he, he brings up this whole idea of being children of God there too. And uh, maybe we just want to bring that verse in. So the Gospel of John. Yes, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Um, can I just... Can I just say it? You can, but where are we starting? Uh, verse 12. Mm -hmm. This is uh, John, Gospel of John, not First John. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. says, Yet to all who received him, to everyone who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. Children not born of natural descent or of a human, or of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. Right? And so children that are born in the... When we were born, we were born by a human decision or a husband's will. Like it's a, it's a there's a natural process that goes on right. to bring about uh, the birth of a child uh, here on this earth in the physical form, mm -hmm. right? But this is is different. This is not something like that. This is born of God. Right. So it's not just natural. It's supernatural. It's yes, yes. Super. It's and <laughs> uh, and and so John says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. And so when he talks here in First John one that how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, 
Well, that love that's been lavished on us is giving us the option to, to decide if we want to receive it and become part of God's family, right. become so, a child of God. So uh, my translation says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become, not just to be called, to, but to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of husband's will, but born yeah. of God. So, well, I mean, so we're, we're mincing words, but yeah. um, there, it, it's more than just being called. It's actually becoming something. Yes, and, and I think my translation says that too. I just, I think <laughs> I've had this first memorized and I probably had that one word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> For forever. I, let me just say, I uh, way back Bible quiz on John. Yes. That was one of the, the books that, um, that I did Bible quizzing on. Yeah. So I had this memorized at one point, yes. way, way, way back. Yes. Well, it's it's it, it, it's good, and it's good to go over it and and to make sure that uh, which is good for me. With all the scriptures I have memorized is to um, go back and and fact check them, so to speak, to make sure I got the wording right. Because sometimes yeah. the uh, when you repeat things over, it's sort of like you know when you hear a song uh, on the radio or or like. You know, somewhere. Did you realize all of a sudden you've been singing the wrong words for like 20 years? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, or like when well, you play telephone and by the time it gets around to the other side, when you whispered something in someone's yeah. ear, it's nothing like what what uh, happened the first time around. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, it's good good to have get, be accurate on that. But um, Paul writes in, in Ephesians chapter 1 in one of, another favorite passage of mine where he talks about... Um, uh, the riches of God's grace that has been lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And so those, I think that there might be more, but those are two references in the New Testament to that word lavish. Lavish, I like that word. Yeah, it's just wonderful. We, we all would love to be the recipient of lavish things. Well, guess what? We are because God has lavished his love on us. He's lavished his grace on us. And I love how Paul writes, in, in Ephesians 1, I think it's probably around verse 8, where he says that he's lavished his grace on us with all wisdom and understanding. So he's done it with a purpose and a plan. Yeah. He hasn't just like kind of thrown it on us and said, there, now go and enjoy. You know, he, he did it with a purpose and a plan. And it was to... With a purpose, for a purpose, and on purpose. <laughs> yes. Did somebody say that once? Yeah, well, I think that's intentional thinking. <laughs> that's another, but uh, God, that's God was did. very intentional yeah. in what he did there, right? Mm -hmm. And and we are the recipients and, and reap the blessing of that. But then he goes on and he says um, uh, that the reason the world does not know us is that the world does not know him. And so when we are misunderstood, when people don't uh, understand this love that we have for God and the love that he has for us, we need to just be patient and, and, um, and realize that uh, not everybody, uh, until a person's eyes are opened uh, to the spiritual things, they're not, it's not going to make sense to them. Mm -hmm. And so let's give others grace, grace, right? And even if they're um, being really nasty to us. Let's mm -hmm. still give them grace, right? Because mm -hmm. God does. Because we want to love those who are mean to us and mm -hmm. persecute us, right? Mm -hmm. Pray for those who persecute you, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Right. And then I like in verse 2 where he says, Dear friends, now that we are children of God, what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, that's Jesus coming back, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And that's this incredible moment that we all look forward to uh, where we will see Jesus and then we will be changed and we will be transformed. And, and John says what we're going to be is not yet really clear to us, right? Yeah. We don't, and, and I just want to say we don't have to have the beyond this life all figured out. Sometimes I think people, um, based on certain scriptures, they develop a lot of theology around that. And, and some of that can be okay, but I think we want to hold all of our interpretations and our theology around that somewhat lightly and, and just realize that the greatest uh, hope that we have is we know that we are God's children and that we will be with him and all of the details will sort themselves out at that time. I think the important thing is that we remain in him, right, right as it talks about here, um, because we can get the cart before the horse sometimes. It's like we're trying to push the cart from behind instead of 
you know, pulling it along behind us, mm -hmm. right? And and that can become a, a roadblock right. to us in our relationship with God and our relationship with others. Yeah. And I think of the Apostle Paul as a, a, a huge example of that. He thought he knew God. He'd studied the Word. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He yeah. knew the Bible. He knew the Scriptures inside and out. And yet it never led him to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It led him to persecute the church of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm until he had an encounter with Jesus himself. Yeah. And that turned him right around and he's like, okay, 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 my understanding of scripture has gotten in my way. Mm -hmm. It's gotten in the way between God and me. Yeah. It's like, get that behind and I'm going to walk with Jesus now Yeah. and other things will sort themselves out. And so he took that knowledge of the scripture that he had and he, had, he gained wisdom and insight from the Father. Mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit to disciple a whole generation yeah. and many generations since through the words and the letters that he has written. That's such a good word, Angie, uh, to keep things in proper perspective. And let's focus on keeping the main thing the main thing, which is that we are followers of Jesus. And as we ended the show last week talking about the Great Commission, we have a task to do, and that is to tell the whole world of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that, that we've been commanded to. And uh, so let's be about that and let's not get caught up on, on uh, some of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then he talks about in verse 3, I like this, um, so this, you know, we have this hope of this glorious appearing of Jesus and that we're going to be transformed, we're going to be like him for we shall see him as he is. And verse 3 says, everyone who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure. Mm -hmm. So the hope of the returning Jesus Christ is that it brings a, about a holiness and a purity and, a, and, and lifestyle, lifestyle decisions and choices that line up with God's word because we want to walk faithfully each and every day. I, I love this verse. Everyone who has this hope, this hope in Jesus, this hope in his returning, mm -hmm. purifies himself just as he is pure. Right. It cleans us up. Yeah. Our yeah. hope in Jesus has a cleansing effect in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's wonderful. Did you know that verse was in here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it struck me in a new way. Yeah. That's good. Um, let's go on and read the next uh, three verses. They're, they're not real long. Do you want, they kind of tie in with that, Four to seven. that idea. Four to six. Four to six. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Ooh, that's a big out. Yeah. Well, and actually, maybe you should just read seven to ten because it just kind of, it's kind all of a com together. kind of a common theme, and I think we can um, we can pull it all together there. Right. So, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. So in this passage, John is really uh, working to correct that teaching of Gnosticism. Sure is. That, really going at it. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> saying, it's all right, you can do whatever you want and it doesn't matter. And he's saying, no. Nope, 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 nope. It really does matter. Yeah. Uh, because he's saying, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. If we, anyone who continues to sin has neither seen him or known him. And uh, then he goes on uh, and he says, he who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. And then I love this second half of... Oh, it has a bit of a ring to it. The devil has been sinning from the beginning. Yeah. It's got yeah. a bit of a... Well, the second half of, of 
John, 1 John 3, verse 8 is, is one of uh, my other favorite parts of this book. It says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. Mm -hmm. And that is destroying the devil's works in your life and in mine so that we can walk free. And how did Jesus do that? Well, he did that by his death on the cross and by resurrecting. He broke the power of death and he raised to new life. And so when you and I become followers of Jesus, we, uh, you know, symbolic in our baptism, right? We, we're, we go down into the water, into our water grave, and we're raised to new life in Jesus. And now we can walk in new ways. And there is a learning and a, and a process of, of becoming more and more like him each day. But this is the whole idea of that we should not expect to sin each day. It's, it's what we've talked about in um, a few weeks back in, uh, in our Consider This series when we, we were looking at that Consider verse. Consider This, there's in, a playlist. In, in verse uh, chapter Roman, I'm getting real mixed up here. Romans chapter five, verse 11, which says, uh, in this same way, consider yourselves dead to sin, yeah. right? And so that's basically what John is saying here. You should consider that you are dead to sin, that sin is not alive in you and you can now walk in new ways. No one who is born of God can continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. They won't go on sinning. Yeah, I mean, I love that. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work mm -hmm. in your life and in my life, Yeah. right? And I, it reminds me of a verse in Acts mm -hmm. uh, chapter 10, um, verse, um, I'm going to say 37 and 38. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because mm -hmm. God was with him. Right. He was healing people who were under some other power, mm -hmm. not God's power. There was a power at work, and he's named it here as the power of the devil, that, um, that Jesus went around and did good and healed people, mm -hmm. broke this power of the enemy that was over people. And what was the result? Healing. Yeah. Healing. So, yeah. The and of the good works of Jesus. What did he do? He taught, he healed, he... Raise the dead. He well, he delivered people, people from, demons, from demons. Yeah, which is, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. we know that's a demonic the yeah. power of the devil. Right, right. but he came. Going on. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Yeah, uh, and so that's something that we need to remind ourselves of regularly. Yeah, um, when we feel like maybe we're struggling with some of the devil's works, it's like no, that power of that is broken over your life and over mine today in the name of Jesus. And, and then he, John is going on and he's saying that really the evidence of the fact that we're born of him, that we're in him and he's in us, is that we're going to do the right things. He says in verse 10, this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of devil are. It's sort of like the fruit inspector, right? Is like Jesus saying, by their fruits, you will know them, yeah. right? And John says, anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love their sister and brother. Mm. And so this whole theme of love, we're going to pick up on that next week. Love. Because that goes on throughout the rest of this chapter. Right. And uh, we'll, we'll talk some more about that. But let's just say that the, to sum up this week is that we want to remain in him so we can have confidence. We want to receive this love that he's lavished on us and have this incredible hope of Jesus returning. We're going to be transformed. We're going to, it's going to allow us to, um, or it's going to change us in the way that it's, it's going to bring about a purity and a holiness in our lives so that we will um, not partner with sin any longer. Right. And realizing that the devil's works have been destroyed so you and I can walk in freedom today. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we should end in prayer. And yes. I kind of want to pray around some of this, that the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And then yep. flipping back again to Acts Well, you go ahead. 10, you go where, ahead, my dear. and Where it said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. 
because God was with them. So let's pray. Maybe you feel like you're under the power of the devil. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some things going on in your life that ah, need to be broken yeah. in Jesus' name. So let's, um, I want you just to think of those things right now as we pray, and we're going to ask that those things be broken in your life. Right on. Okay. So, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you. Father, that the reason Jesus appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy the works of the enemy, and how he went around doing good, and he healed all who were under the power of the enemy. And he released his disciples, he released his apostles to do the very same work that he was doing. And he gives us that same power today. He baptizes us with the Holy Spirit today. You baptize us with that Holy Spirit today to do the very same things. And so, Father, today we pray for those that are listening. And Lord, we ask that you would break the power of the enemy in our lives, mm -hmm. that we would no longer be tied to the things that um, where we sin, Father, the things that where we need to be healed of. Lord, demonic oppression. We command a breaking right now of agreements, Lord, and we ask that you would set us free in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, for your healing to come mm -hmm. in Jesus' name for whatever ailments we have, whatever diseases we have, whatever sicknesses we have. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have the power to set us free. And we ask that you would do that even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Angie, that reminds me that uh, at the beginning of the year, I felt like the word for the year was freedom. Freedom. Yeah, freedom for all of us yeah. from the power of darkness yeah. so we can walk in the light. And I felt at the beginning of the year, grace, grace, grace. Mm -hmm. The grace of God, it's available to us. And lavished on us. Yeah. Okay, well, we trust this has been an encouragement to you. Uh, and... Um, we Come just, back again next yeah. week, and until we meet again, <laughs> stay awake and stay alert. <laughs> All right. Have a good week. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up, follow, and subscribe. Arise Now and Paul and Angie Wagler are part of the E3 Canada family. Consider partnering with us through prayer and financial support to touch more people with a powerful message of God's love, hope, and transforming power. You can find us at arisenow.ca.